Uh, hi there. Uh, thank you for this project for having me today. Um, my name is uh, Hadi. I have several hats. Uh, I'm the head of uh, CERT uh, Banque de France, which is the French National Central Bank, but I'm also a co-organizer of the BotConf conference, and I'm here as uh, the leader of the HAVE project. And uh, this presentation will go through the uh, integration we did with our security incident response platform and analysis and uh, uh, artifact analysis engine with a um, uh, uh, So the, to get the, the idea of where I'm getting uh, into is that the fact when, uh, well, as a cert, uh, obviously we are here as firemen when the prevention fails, uh, which means that we need to be able to detect uh, as quickly as possible, uh, react, uh, then recover uh, from um, the incident we might have, and uh, share uh, back the uh, different IOCs and artifacts uh, we have collected uh, during the uh, uh, investigation. And uh, all the, uh, this uh, process is obviously fed by cyber threat intelligence or threat intelligence if you want to just drop the cyber part of it because we say so, so, much, so much cyber uh, in a day. Um, and um, also, uh, given the fact that we are uh, facing uh, a threat landscape that is uh, um, extremely face-based, uh, we end up in our same in different ideas or uh, security tools with a high number of security events. Um, this, uh, uh, if you take the in, uh, that into account and add to it, uh, it the fact that um, we are in a situation where there is a, a talent shortage, at least in my country, France, uh, we have also limited money in time. Obviously, as I'm working for a national central bank, I'm printing the money, but I'm not uh, able to use it, uh, at least uh, uh, as I'd like to. And uh, we are expecting security analysts to be uh, aware of any new technology that Silicon Valley or China these days uh, uh, put forward, like cloud, IoT, or, or whatever. So basically, we are the same amount of persons, uh, and we uh, need to understand all of this, of course. Uh, and uh, this brings into the picture the necessity of uh, automating uh, as much uh, as many things as possible, uh, but also collaborating uh, because as a, a team we need to work together. Uh, and this is where MISP, uh, the Hive, and Cortex come into play. And obviously, this is a continuous Im uh, improvement process uh, because we just cannot stop and take our breath uh, as often as we'd like to. Um, so we have detected, reacted, recovered. So is it time uh, to take a step back and um, mind other things? No, obviously not, because we need to share. Uh, it's our conviction that sharing, of course, is caring. Well, this is like a very, uh, like your in any presentation out there uh, put forward by DHS or any uh, one that we'd like you to share would, would say sharing is caring, prevention, my detection is prevention, and, uh, and so and so. Uh, but to some extent this is true. Uh, and uh, because uh, as uh, Alex and others have said on and on, uh, is that by sharing some of the IOCs or all the IOCs that uh, you, you, you have collected uh, to trusted peers, hopefully they will come back, they, they will share back and come back with other uh, IOCs that you have not uh, seen before. And again, we use MISP uh, uh, for, to that purpose. Uh, now, of, of, we have mentioned the Hive in, in Cortex. What are there? Uh, so the Hive is a security incident response platform. Uh, it's really built on collaboration. Uh, it allows many analysts to work on the same case um, at the same time. Uh, and uh, I will show you later on a, a typical workflow um, that everything in the Hive is centered around the notion of a case, and case can be broken down in as many tasks as you'd like to. Um, and through Cortex, it allows you to do analysis of observables, or IOCs, and uh, store them. But uh, it is complementary to MISP, it is not here to replace MISP. Because if you need to share those IUCs, you have to have MISP in order to share them. Uh, otherwise, they are just stored locally um, and for your usage uh, or to build like a kind of history of your CERT or SOC team uh, to understand the past 
uh, to build the future. As for the authentication, we support different authentication mo models, uh, um, DAP, uh, AD, uh, AP API keys, and local accounts. And the Hive and Cortex are currently used by uh, several security teams throughout the world. Uh, well, obviously us, uh, but uh, also uh, Serbund. Uh, we have uh, a number of other teams like Infineon Technologies in Germany, um, uh, ANZ Bank um, in New Zealand and Australia. Uh, there are uh, uh, Ben Paribas in France, uh, La Poste Group in France as well. Um, in the United States, I can mention uh, the State Department of Texas, uh, for example. Um, some uh, are pure search SOC teams, others are pure threat hunting shops, uh, and, and so on. <coughs> As for Cortex, uh, it is an uh, analysis engine. It's uh, pretty date simple. Uh, well, it has a web UI to uh, allow you to quickly assess, I would say, the maliciousness or um, have some idea on the observables you are seeing through the investigation. Uh, it rather should be used either from the Hive or from another uh, platform through its REST API for automated bulk uh, observable analysis. Uh, so, for example, I mentioned some threat hunting shops or threat intelligence shops that use Cortex. Basically, they, they just throw at it whenever they collect uh, and receive um, uh, results back and to sort out to the different observables they have collected. Uh, so it relies on analyzers and analyzers can be developed in any programming language uh, that is supported by Linux. Obviously today we have all the analyzers uh, coded in Python, but you can do it in Ruby, Perl, or, or whatever you'd like to. Uh, and as Alex mentioned in his uh, talk, uh, Cortex has the ability to invoke MIS expansion models. Uh, so are not limited to the uh, uh, native Cortex analyzers, uh, but it can also be queried from MIS in order to enrich events. Uh, Architecture-wise, so um, nothing uh, really fancy on the front end part. Uh, the Hive uh, relies on Angular JS and Bootstrap. And uh, the backend is written in Scala, uh, and we uh, store everything in ES5. Uh, so just for those who have been using uh, the Hive for uh, some time now, uh, you, you might have heard uh, uh, us speaking about moving away from Elasticsearch. That this will certainly happen next year, uh, as we will be moving to a GraphDB. Uh, to uh, limit a number of uh, shortcomings we have today, like for example, the relationships between cases uh, or the ability to uh, extract uh, new observable uh, after you have analyzed uh, existing ones. Um, and uh, also, we are slowly but surely moving toward visualization. And ES uh, uh, has a shortcomings that uh, need us to, to move out of it. Uh, from it, sorry. As for Cortex, uh, it has no storage uh, currently. So if you uh, fire a bunch of analyzers and then uh, you reboot your instance, and you read them all. Unless, of course, you use the Hive on another platform that will just grab the result from Cortex and store it uh, in uh, whatever uh, DB or storage system you, you have. Um, and as I said, the analyzers uh, are written uh, currently in Python, but you can write them in, in, in um, uh, the support in the programming language. As for the workflow within the Hive, uh, the Security Incident Response Platform, everything is centered uh, around the notion of a case, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, so a case can be created from scratch or using a case template. Uh, and a case can be created from uh, what we call an alert. An alert can be uh, created by um, a SIM, by, uh, from an email, uh, or from a missed event. A case can be case broken down into tasks. So for example, like uh, communicate with the constituency, uh, analyze the, uh, uh, the logs within the proxy, and so on. And uh, it has one, uh, zero, or, or one or many observables. Uh, and uh, a task uh, can be broken down into logs. So this is just a rich text editor. Uh, so whenever an analyst do something significant in the case, they can uh, write, uh, sorry, in the task, they can write uh, what they, they have been doing. Um, 
and uh, attach also evidence uh, if they need to. And as for the observables, you can apply one or many analyzers uh, to an observable, which will result in a job, <coughs> and once it has finished it, uh, using a report template that we provide for free, uh, the, uh, it will generate an analysis report. Uh, I have some examples later on. And uh, we have chosen uh, not to limit the user view of cases or tasks or whatever, so any security analyst has access to all cases, all tasks, all uh, observables, and, and so on. Um, and uh, one of the main features we will be implementing next year uh, at the request of many teams out there is to uh, be uh, able to have some kind of an airbag system where some analyzers, uh, some, uh, some analysts will be limited uh, to viewing uh, a subset uh, of cases or tasks. Um, and uh, anything so uh, that is done um, in the Hive uh, um, is, uh, I would say, audited. You have an audit trail. Uh, that currently you have to uh, use some um, um, common line um, uh, in order uh, kung fu in order to get the uh, the audit trail. Uh, but we are rebuilding the uh, user interface uh, in order to, to, that, uh, to do that graphically pretty soon. Um, and uh, now for the big picture. Uh, so how those three uh, open source software fit together. Uh, so. Um, the Hive, as I said, can receive alerts from many sources, uh, and uh, it can also uh, you can also connect it to one or multiple missed instances in order to pull events. Whenever there is a new or updated event, it will show it up to you. Um, and uh, once you have your alert, you can preview it. Be it, so uh, by alert, I mean either something that comes from SIM or anything else, or from MISP. Uh, you can preview it. You have uh, what we call a proximity uh, a notion where uh, you can see if the alert under current consideration um, is related to an existing case. If that's the case, uh, if, if that's so, you can import it right in the existing case uh, or create a, a new one uh, from a template that you are able to select. And um, once you have created the case, you start investigating, um, and when you collect observables, you can submit them for analysis to one or multiple Cortex instances. So the Hive can interface itself with one or many MISP instances and one or many Cortex instances. And uh, Cortex can rely on its uh, analyzers uh, to analyze the observables. Or um, search, or uh, one of the analyzers is what we call MISP search. It's contributed by Sertbund, and uh, it allows you to search uh, for an observable in one or many MISP instances. So, here. And Cortex can also rely on uh, the MISP extension modules if uh, yeah, you, you need those ones as well. If you are only a MISP shop, you can rely on Cortex uh, to enrich events by uh, leveraging all the analyzers that uh, Cortex uh, supports. Uh, and once we have done, uh, you have finished investigating, uh, sharing is caring. So from the Hive, you can export uh, the case and the observables you have flagged as IOCs. So you can uh, uh, export them to one or multiple MISP instances. So the current version, uh, uh, once you have configured MISP instances in the Hive, uh, so, for example, let's say you have three uh, MISP instances, A, B, C. So you are only allowed to import or export from the A, B, or C, and, or all of them. Uh, if you have another MISP instance, say D, uh, it has to be configured, so you have to pull events from it as well. Uh, in uh, the next uh, major version, Serana, which is expected for release uh, by the end of month, early next month, uh, you'd be able to pick and choose uh, the MISP instances, so you are not necessarily <coughs> limited by having the same instances for import and for export. So this is a view of the uh, what we call the alert panel. Uh, so uh, you'll get the slides probably later on um, on the um, MISP website. Um, 
So, uh, so sorry for those in the back, uh, it's not uh, highly clear, but basically here are the alerts, whenever there are new alerts, they, uh, they come here. Uh, so this is a uh, type is only MISP. These are basically new events, but if there is an existing MISP event that has been updated, uh, you will see it here status as updated. You can uh, preview it, ignore it, uh, or uh, uh, just, uh, you can ignore it like, uh, for example, if you have a MISP event and you decide to ignore it uh, once and for all, so any new updates, you, know, you will not be able to see them, uh, or you just say ignore once. Uh, so as the investigation is ongoing and somebody is feeding your MISP uh, event, uh, you are waiting for them to get to a point where you have uh, sufficient um, um, indicators uh, to start your investigation. Um, there is one li uh, limitation that you, you have to know about, uh, and this is again uh, due uh, to uh, the way we use uh, Elasticsearch, uh, is that imagine, for example, you have invert... Uh, sorry. So, I, I was, uh, so if, for example, you import this event as a new case, then you import another event as another case, so you have two cases, you work on them, uh, and then you re realize later on that they are uh, uh, revolving around the same thread. Uh, you have the ability in the Hive to merge them. But once you do that, if you merge cases uh, coming from separate missed events, you will lose the ability to auto-update the case from your missed event. Uh, put otherwise, if you import, for example, this one, you keep it separate, whenever there is a new update on the MISP instance, you will automatically receive the new indicators of compromise uh, or attributes uh, that have been um, uh, added to uh, the MISP event that has generated this case. But if you uh, decide to merge that case, which is receiving updates from uh, the MISP instance with another case, you will severe that connection. So this is a limitation we have here. As for exporting, so uh, it's quite easy. Up there you have a, a share bottle. When it indicates zero, it means that it has not been shared with any uh, MISP instance. Uh, but uh, <coughs> if you decide, like, uh, just going back, so uh, here when you see the list star, that means that this observable has been flagged as IUC. So anything that you have flagged as IUC, when you click the share button, it will be automatically uh, uh, shared, well, it will uh, suggest a number of MISP instances to uh, export the case as uh, uh, events to. So just click and export on um, one or several MISP instances. And uh, once you have finished it, uh, you will have the share button that has been updated with the number uh, of MISP instances that have received uh, this, uh, this case uh, as an event. Please note when you export uh, an event to MISP, you will have a link that will allow you to go directly to your MISP instance, and from there you have to review the, the, the quality of the export and how the event is done, do additional tagging or whatever, and then you publish. The Hive does not automatically publish the events it exports to MISP. You have to review them prior uh, to uh, publishing. Um, as for Cortex, uh, it has currently 27 analyzers. If you go to the uh, GitHub repository, there are uh, maybe six or seven, I don't uh, have the proper uh, count currently, that are waiting our approval in, uh, as pull request. Uh, but obviously you can test them, use them, and if you have tested them, uh, you can say so, so we can uh, speed up their integration. Uh, so uh, we have, for example, uh, uh, analyzers for Circle, PS PSSL, PDNS services, uh, VirusTotal, Joe Sandbox, Cuckoo Sandbox, uh, that has been contributed by uh, LDO Cert. We have uh, DNSDB, uh, Fish Initiative, uh, and so on. And we have MISP Search. So the current version of MISP Search will allow you to search uh, that is, has been contributed by the Serbund, will allow you to search uh, in <coughs> one or several MISP instances at once. So, just to uh, wrap it all up, the Hive is able to import from multiple MISP instances and keep the event you have com uh, uh, imported as cases in sync. So, whenever the, uh, the event has been updated, you will receive the observable, the attributes as observables 
in your case. The hive can export to one or multiple instances, uh, MISP instances, sorry. And Cortex can search in one or multiple MISP uh, searches as well, uh, MISP instances as well. Um, and uh, those in the black box uh, in the bottom are uh, upcoming analyzers or that are within our uh, uh, approval. Uh, just to show you uh, uh, some screenshot of an analysis uh, example. Uh, so when you go to an observable, uh, you can uh, have, you, you see the different uh, uh, analyzers that apply to it. Uh, then you can fire one or several uh, at once. Uh, and uh, when you do so, so it, uh, you, for example, this is an example of uh, reverse total. So you have uh, the detailed uh, report, but we also uh, use uh, uh, what we call short reports uh, according to a taxonomy. For example, here it, say, uh, it says that the, the following hash has been found in one MISP instance. Um, and of course, if you go to the uh, uh, analysis that corresponds to this MISP search, you will have a link uh, with the details uh, on the MISP record, uh, even, sorry. And here it says VT45 out of 61. So the color um, uh, changes de depending on its information. It's blue, uh, uh, green, it's, it means safe. Uh, orange uh, means like a suspicious and, um, and red is uh, obviously malicious. Uh, and you can change that. Uh, one important thing on analyzers is that they uh, care for the TLP. So let's say, for example, you have uh, a hash that is TLP red. Uh, you won't be able to submit it to Veristone. Uh, if you have a file that's TLP red, uh, the hive will extract the hash. So it can you can submit the hash to Veristone, but not the file per se. Uh, this is user comfortable uh, uh, also. Uh, so as a recap, uh, besides what I've said earlier, uh, you uh, you can also use, uh, well, currently we have some limited statistics that will allow you to drive your activity. Um, uh, for example, how many uh, time uh, it took you to uh, deal with a specific case, uh, why this task uh, took uh, longer than expected. So maybe uh, it warrants some investigation and automation uh, later on. Maybe you have to create some new analyzer uh, to perform a tedious task. Uh, we have implemented uh, a rough uh, version of uh, webhooks, so you can open tickets, for example, in uh, IT ticketing systems. Um, and you have also what we call the uh, real-time stream, so it's like a Twitter-like feed. Uh, whenever a case is created, a case, uh, a task is added, uh, someone takes a, a, a task uh, and so on, or an analysis of an observer has finished, the real-time stream uh, is updated. And uh, we are, co uh, as the, in the new version, version 3, uh, a code named Serana, which, uh, as I said, should come uh, in the next <laughs> couple of weeks. Uh, we will uh, introduce the notion of dynamic dashboards, so you can configure metrics, uh, custom fields, for example, threat actors, whatever, uh, in whatever fashion you'd like to, uh, and um, have in, like a nifty, uh, uh, images for your management to ask for budget or really for to, to drive your activity. Uh, uh, we have also a number of additional software. Uh, so the Hive 4Py is a Python library to create alert cases uh, from multiple sources. So in our constituency, this is what we do uh, is whenever there is a, a, a user that spots a suspicious email, uh, they have a link in their mail client, uh, sorry, a button in the mail client, they click on it, it creates a uh, um, uh, kind of a wrapper or around the email with um, the headers and uh, such. It sends them to a, a, a specific mailbox where we have a, a scrapper that will pull the, uh, the, uh, the, the mailbox and use the high 4 p to send uh, an alert <coughs> with the user notification and uh, different pieces of the mail. Uh, in the alerts, so we can act on it. Uh, we also use that for our SIM. So our SIM currently is uses uh, email as well whenever there is uh, something new. 
but for example, for those of you who use uh, Splunk, there is a Splunk app contributed by uh, Mill Smith, uh, Mike Smith, sorry, from uh, Digital Guardian, uh, that will allow you to uh, raise alerts in the hide right from Splunk. <laughs> Somebody from Enclose also contributed something similar for Elastalert. Uh, and uh, finally, we also provide Cortex for Pi, which allow you to submit observables in bulk uh, through the Cortex RESTful API uh, from alternative platforms or custom scripts in order to uh, analyze uh, observables uh, at scale. Uh, this is a, a usage uh, example. Uh, so you can have the Hive getting alerts from different uh, sources. So email reports, uh, see social media monitor, direct intel provider. Uh, then you can analyze uh, your observables using different Cortex instances. For example, if you have suspicious files, you can submit them to a separate Cortex instance that is sitting on uh, I would say a uh, separate network uh, for obvious operational security reasons uh, with your sandboxes on them. Uh, and uh, you can absorb events from one or multiple uh, instances. Uh, so this is one way uh, of using the ecosystem, I would say. As for the software, uh, the Hive, Cortex, and MISP obviously are all available under a free open source AGPL license. Uh, as uh, the MISP project uh, provide uh, a VM, and we also provide a VM with the Hive Cortex, Cortex for Pi, the Hive for Pi, and everything uh, with the report templates and so on. Uh, and uh, the Hive and Cortex can be installed uh, using RPM, the Docker, binary package, or build from the source uh, code. And uh, we have not done serious, I would say, performance testing, but we just use a decent computer, meaning like 60 gig, uh, uh, gig of uh, uh, storage uh, with about 8 gig of RAM and uh, um, 8 uh, virtual CPUs um, with the Hive and Cortex uh, and it will just fine. Uh, and you can find additional information on the project, both project on the Hive, Hive and project .org or this Hive and project .org. Do you have any questions for me? Or comments. So, can we get a copy of this slide? Sure. Maybe yeah. Yeah. This will be online. Anything else? Everything is clear. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I have a question. We have worked on an incident that we a lot of things we do here in the we kind of put by hand or Excel lists or other strange tools. That's not really before to checking out what the type is from. But the one kind of thing this thing is really. Or whether all my documentation can go into it. Do you go Hive or where do you want to pick? Because in our case, we use the wiki. We just said we wiki, put everything we learned about all the network and the systems affected and so on. So I'm not sure that that would be even good in one case where we put every host name, every IP. Yeah, uh, no, you have, well, currently there is no uh, wiki kind of uh, uh, wiki facility within the Hive. <laughs> So to have to separate wiki or something like that. Or we can, for example, if in your wiki you have, uh, let's say, some kind of a DB with, a, uh, like, for example, systems, uh, uh, users, departments, whatever, you can easily create a Cortex analyzer. <coughs> so, for example, if, let's say, you have, a, I would say, a username or some kind of a, a machine name, you can query, this is what we do uh, internally. You can uh, create an analyzer in Cortex that will query your specific DB or wiki to just ask it a simple question. What's the correspondence between this machine name and let's say the department or the service and this is what we do internally. So this is like, uh, uh, we have, a, a, I would say, a private system. This is why we have not released the Cortex analyzer that corresponds to that, but this is what we do uh, on a daily basis. It is very easy to do. So if I have a CMDB somewhere, which I could put in the exactly. to. Yeah. yeah, and we, we so just uh, you know send, send the request right from Cortex to get the information back. Yeah, go ahead. You can create alerts from emails, but uh, is there any facility, any feature to, uh, for example, uh, I would create an uh, 
Our from email from a user. Okay. Is there a possibility to reply to the user with the response for, for this uh, for this notification, something like that? So currently no, but it's on our roadmap, and we hope to get around to implementing it by June July next year. Okay. So in June July next year, hopefully you will be able to answer right from the platform. You don't have to go to your email box to answer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the painful thing was uh, we we have several different analysis tasks to get a, a timeline, a common timeline that all events about all analysis. Is that something you can help? With? <laughs> or that, uh, so, uh, like a, a timeline of events or analysis, uh, etc. So this is what we call the reporting feature. It's again on our roadmap. We don't have it currently, but again, it's slated for next year, Q two. Any other? Question, comment. Well, thank you.